What is a PERT chart? Well, if you're asking that question, then you've come to the right place because today I'm gonna to be explaining exactly what it is, I'm gonna be showing you what they look like and giving you some tips and suggestions along the way if you are tasked with creating one or if you just want to know more about them. So here is what we are going to cover today. We're gonna to start off with a simple definition of what a PERT chart is. We're gonna be looking at when they are used, what they should include, how you would go about creating one, what they look like, the reasons why you should be using PERT charts, and the pros and cons of this particular methodology. So first and foremost, why you're likely here, what is a PERT chart? Well, a PERT chart, put simply, is a visual project management tool that is used to map out and track project tasks and timelines. So this particular methodology is essentially a way of estimating the duration of projects by building a network and it enables the scheduling, organization and coordination of tasks within a project. Now, if you're wondering why it's called a PERT chart, well, it's actually an acronym. So it simply stands for project, sometimes program, depending obviously on the initiative, evaluation and review technique. And that leads us into how they are used. Well, project managers often create them um, they, by drawing boxes or circles, and these are known as nodes, and we're gonna be looking at this in, in, an, in the next couple of slides. Um, and these nodes represent events or milestones, um, and they're connected via arrows, which in turn represent the tasks that must be completed between each of these uh, tasks or milestone, uh, these milestones, sorry, and the amount of time that will be take, that, that is required in order to complete each task. So it's often drawn as a free form kind of diagram, and I'll be showing you an example of a couple uh, in future slides. Um, now, PERT charts are less frequently used compared to critical path uh, methods and Gantt charts, so just bear that in mind as well. They're not as, as common. So what should they include? Well, I've kind of alluded to some of those things there. Um, firstly, we need nodes and they should be numbered. So these are events or milestones um, which are required for the completion of a project, um, obviously broken down into the different components there uh, that would move the project forward. We need some directional or even concurrent arrows, and that basically represents, as I say, the tasks and the activities that need to be completed. Now, you may also need to introduce divergent arrows, and they represent tasks that a team may work on simultaneously um, in any sequence um, that do not have dependencies. So how do you create one? Well, to begin with, you need to identify all of the project's activities. That could be major phases, milestones, and of course, tasks. You need to consider and identify any dependencies. So essentially enabling you to gauge the project sequence. Then you need to actually draw it itself. Of course, you need to, you need to build it. So that's where you're basically putting down those milestones and tasks. You need to be thinking about the numbered nodes and you need to basically add in those directional arrows accordingly. Now, lastly, you need to establish your timelines for when the tasks need to be completed. So I've included a couple of different perch chart examples like this, and there's plenty more out there. Some are a lot more complex than this. I've just given you the basic ones and I will be showing you in a future video on this channel uh, how to actually create one in Excel or maybe even another tool as well. So do you know consider subscribing um, if, and, and hitting the bell icon if you if you want to kind of look out for that. But these examples on the left hand side it is we've, we can see that the nodes as a circular um, as a circular reference there. Um, and these are kind of milestones in the project. They're not actually clearly identified in this particular PERT chart. Um, so that obviously could be replaced um, with free text. And you see that more in the second example. Um, and we've actually just got a very, very basic um, overview of a project here where we're launching a product. So it goes all the way from project initiation, uh, the product needs to be designed, and it ends up obviously being, being launched after it's been tested, there's some iterations, etc. So yeah, these are, these are the kind of nodes in each aspect. Um, you've got the arrows, which obviously represent uh, the tasks and you've got the timelines as well. So you can see the whole duration of the project um, in the one on the left-hand side um, and the diverging arrows. So we've got some diverging uh, arrows in each one as well. 
Um, so what they essentially do is, is show some parallel and concurrent tasks. So just consider that as well. So why would you want to use a PERT chart? Well, they help a project manager or even a team shape their projects and manage all of the time that has been allotted um, and to make most uh, best use of that time. They help to estimate a completion date of either tasks or a project. Uh, they can help identify or gauge risks relating to the entire project or even particular task. And it enables you to kind of calculate possibilities of meeting deadlines. So if you have stakeholders who want to know your deadlines, then that's that's obviously one of the main, main benefits here. Um, you can see tasks which, or, or even areas where there's flexibility. Maybe you need to cut down some time on particular tasks or uh, you want to see where the kind of bottlenecks are or where there's tasks that are taking longer than normal. Um, well, you know, PERT charts are great for identifying those kind of things. And as such, they're great for just scheduling tasks in uh, general, uh, knowing when to uh, start a task or end a task and to see the dependencies in between tasks as well. So I'm just documenting some pros and cons here. So the pros are you get basically a bird's eye view or overview of a project um, and all of the different tasks that make it up or milestones that need to be completed for it to, to for the deliverables to be met. Uh, there's a focus, there's a clear focus on task time frame. So this can be really, really good if you have deadlines or you want to ensure that the project runs um, to schedule. You can forecast projects and get an idea of that project duration, as I just mentioned. It's great for project coordination, whether that's between teams, individuals or tasks, or maybe even resources and processes as well. And as I've kind of mentioned previously, um, it's great for identifying bottlenecks and dependencies. Now, the cons are that they can be time intensive to maintain, maybe even it's set up to begin with. Um, you know, things can change, tasks can change, durations can change, and every time that, that happens, you need to kind of update the, the PERT chart. Um, they can be challenging to understand and interpret. Now, the ones I showed you are obviously very basic, but on larger or complex projects, they can get really, really uh, heavy and, and, and yeah, just be really, really challenging to follow. So just consider that depending on the, the complexity of the project or how much detail you want to put in them. Of course, more detail usually makes them more useful, but that comes at a con. And they also can become quickly outdated particularly on projects where they where things move fast. So do consider that if you are going to use one or you're going to commit to one, then yeah, it, that, that you might need to keep, keep an eye on them and, and update them regularly, which as again, would be time intensive. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button. That tells me I should continue creating videos like this and do consider subscribing to my channel. Um, there's multiple reasons why you may want to. The first one being that in the probably the next video I release is going to be how to create a PERT chart. So look out for that one. But I've also got a lot of videos on just creating other project management artifacts uh, in general on my, on my channel. I've got a lot of different uh, playlists relating to different tools on creating them. So there's one on Excel, for instance, um, there's some on PowerPoint or even some project management tools in particular. Maybe it's something like Smartsheet, Asana, you get the idea. So I would strongly recommend subscribing to my channel. Consider hitting the bell button as well. And with all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day.